Hello, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. This week, we're taking the first five books of the Bible and giving them each four minutes to kind of ask, what do we need to know? What's the core, the synopsis of each of those books? We've done Genesis, we've done Exodus. Book number three in the Bible is Leviticus. Now, Leviticus, you can tell by the name itself, uh, it comes from an idea of the Levites, hence Levitical, be Leviticus, because the Levites form part of the core of that book. The book itself is actually a, a book of laws and regulations that were to govern the Israelites. It's a book that contains a lot of the laws that were given through Moses and, and were given by God on Sinai for Israel to conduct not only their own individual lives, but the life as a society and as a nation. So you'll find within Leviticus, um, all of the laws that deal with sacrifices and the sacrificial system and how you sacrifice for this or what sacrifice you do for that. They'd have different sacrifices depending upon your wealth level. Uh, sometimes you sacrifice a lamb. If you didn't have as much money, you could sacrifice doves. It's, it's, um, it was a really intricate yet fascinating system of sacrifices. It's also Leviticus that sets out a lot of the rules and regulations and instructions about how the Levites would form a priesthood and be the priests that intercede and intervene and minister on behalf of Israel before God. Levi, Leviticus has uh, purity laws, these laws that talk about uh, how you do everything from eat to make clothes, to plow your fields. You have all sorts of purity laws that are in Leviticus. Leviticus has got laws about the holy days or the holidays, the, the festivals and feasts and times that Israel was to celebrate as a nation. Uh, you'll find uh, descriptions of how to do Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Uh, you'll find descriptions on how to do Sukkot, uh, 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 the the ingathering the of the harvest. So all of these different festivals are set out in Leviticus. You've also got moral and ethical laws. Uh, Leviticus uh, tells you how to behave morally and how to behave ethically. You've got laws that pertain to the land. And, and how the land is to be treated and how the land's to stay within family units. It can be loaned out, but it's gotta be redeemed and given back at Jubilee and all sorts of land laws are there as well. But if I'm gonna put it into a synopsis of four things to take away from the book of Leviticus, they are the following four. Number one, over and over and over, God prefaces so many of these commandments with the idea of quote, be holy, for I am holy. Holy, the Hebrew word kadosh, references a, a uniqueness, a set apart uh, on a higher plane. And God calls his people to be holy because we are to bear his image. We are to reflect him to the world and he is holy. So his image bearers should also be holy. Holy separation, point one. Point two, um, atonement and reconciliation takes up a lot of this book. Because when, when you transgress the laws of God, you're not just getting a speeding ticket or violating something like our civil laws or criminal laws in the land today, but you're actually violating the character of God, the lawgiver. And so there needs to be some type of atonement, some type of restoration and reconciliation between the lawbreaker and the lawgiver. Number three, these codes contain daily spiritual life instructions down to the food you eat because a spiritual life before God, a holy life, a separated life is one that doesn't happen once a year. It's a daily minute by minute commitment to live the way God wants you to live. And that's the final fourth point. God desires purity. And that's so clear. So the book of Leviticus set up very good principles and it set it up within a legal framework. It's wonderful to think about, wonderful to contemplate. You've just gotten Leviticus in four minutes because I've made it your video thought for today.